Good Lord, this car is incredible. If you've recently learned that the Ford Mustang GTD is a thing that exists, here is a very quick rundown about how this incredible car came to be. GT3 homologation rules require manufacturers to make and sell street legal versions of their race cars and in order to race the Mustang GT3, Ford created the Mustang GTD, which stands for Grand Tour Daytona, to fulfill the homologation requirements. But unlike most GT3 cars, which start up as road cars that are turned into race cars, the GTD is a race car that was turned into a road car. And instead of just making the GT3 street legal, Ford decided to make it a world-beating supercar. If you're new to my channel, I publish original automotive content every Sunday. So if you're not subscribed yet, click below to subscribe. And don't forget to click the notifications bell so you can be notified about my latest video. For the past four months, we've been watching and listening in awe as those lovely black GTD prototypes have whined and growled their way around the Nürburgring during initial high-speed testing. And while Ford wasn't shy about showing off the GTD to the world, they've only been drip-feeding us information about the car. But over the last couple of months, Ford has finally announced the official specs, and we've also seen a few new GTDs popping up at the Nürburgring and other automotive events. Plus, new footage has been released from Ford, and there is a ton of new information to unpack about this car. So let's get to it. The most obviously striking aspect of the GTD is the exterior. And before we get into all the technical specifics about the materials and engineering and aerodynamics, let's just take a moment to admire the exterior of this car. These lines are absolutely stunning. I don't care who you are, I don't care how much you hate the Mustang, this car is brilliant from every angle. It's angry and aggressive, but also beautiful and fresh. Today, there's a dozen supercar manufacturers who are all making cars that are all starting to look the same. I mean, look at this. These are six completely different cars from completely different manufacturers, but they all look 80% identical. The GTD stands out as something fresh and truly unique. And what I might like the most about it is that even though it's an extreme and edgy looking vehicle, it still has simple classic styling and isn't visually overwhelming like most new supercars today. The biggest hurdle the GTD faces when trying to achieve supercar performance is its shape which in many ways is the opposite of aerodynamic. The first rule in automotive aerodynamics is to minimize the size of the car's front end. And with most supercars being mid-engined, this is less of a challenge. But the GTD on the other hand, houses an enormous V8 engine in the front, requiring the car to have a huge drag-inducing front end Ford has compensated for this by installing hydraulically controlled front flaps beneath the engine, a carbon fiber underbody, a deep front splitter with parallel dive planes, and extractor vents in the hood, which all work together to help channel air through, around, and under the car and reduce frontal air pressure. The sides of the car feature louvers and additional vents in the front fenders and extremely deep side skirts, again which help to reduce air pressure. The rear of this car is also packed with aerodynamics, the most obvious being the huge rear wing which is mounted to the C-pillars instead of the deck lid. Hydraulic actuators are installed inside of those swan neck vertical wing supports 
which control the angle of attack of the rear wing to maximize downforce and minimize drag. A huge multi-stage rear diffuser helps speed up airflow under the car, which reduces air pressure beneath the carbon fiber underbody. According to Multimatic, who will be producing the GTD and also produced the latest Ford GT, the GTD produces more downforce than the Porsche GT3 RS. The next most prominent feature of the GTD is no doubt the engine. Powering this beast is a 5.2 liter V8 Predator engine that is a modified version of the motor used in the Shelby GT500, which has been tuned to produce an astonishing 815 horsepower and 664 pound-feet of torque. The updated engine also utilizes a dry sump oil system which enables an elevated maximum engine speed of 7650 RPM, up 100 RPM from the standard engine. A smaller supercharger pulley helps achieve higher engine output, and additional power comes from an updated Akrapovich titanium exhaust, and it all sounds incredible. Let's just take a moment and listen to the GTD's isolated engine running full acceleration on a dyno. Power is nothing without handling, and Multimatic was tasked with designing the suspension for the GTD. All four corners are fitted with adaptive spool valve dampers, which incorporate a motor to switch between 16 different bump and rebound responses. Other than the adaptive spool valve dampers, the front and rear suspension setups are completely different. To keep the front end as simple as possible, Multimatic steered clear of complicated push rods and swapped out the double ball joint struts of the standard Mustang for unequal length control arms. The Trick rear suspension setup maintains a one-to-one -one motion ratio between push rod and inboard dampers, which was achieved by using inboard mounted dampers that required cutting through the trunk and placing the dampers above the transaxle. All of this ensures a line of direct mechanical communication between wheel and suspension movements. And while they were cutting, Ford created a window to view the suspension at work. There's also a track mode that lowers the car 40 millimeters and tightens up all four corners. Creating a 50-50 weight balance was a huge challenge with a 5.2 liter V8 engine mounted at the front. And to offset the weight bias, Ford moved the 8-speed Tremec dual-clutch transmission to the very back of the chassis. And the space where the standard transmission used to be now houses the dry sump oil reservoir. And now the big question, can you buy one? The base price of a GTD is $325,000, and while that price is unsettlingly high, to date over 7,500 people have applied to purchase one, and as of now, the order books are closed. Ford has stated that the GTD will be built in limited numbers, but nothing specific was mentioned. Like the buyers of the last Ford GT, buyers of the GTD will need to pass a thorough application process, and that process is ridiculous. Here are just some of the items from the application process for the Ford GT. Which cars do you currently own? Which car have you previously owned? Which Fords are presently in your collection? Which Fords have you owned in the past? Which Fords do you think are the most historically important? If you are selected to purchase the car, who are the people that will be riding in it? Which car clubs are you associated with? 
What do you do for a living? Does the company you work for use Ford vehicles in their fleet? What is your company's relationship to Ford? What automotive charities has your company donated to? What are the details of your personal social media presence? Are you a licensed race car driver? What are the details of your motorsport career? What other ways are you involved in motorsports? And then you are also asked to create a video essay about why Ford should select you. Yeah, hey, what's up, Ford? I'm like a huge fan of Ford and the Mustang. So can I get one of those GTDs, please? Now I can tell you that the people I know who were selected to purchase Ford GTs are not Ford people at all and I'm not really sure what the point of this application process was, but I'm hoping that the GTD will end up in the hands of people who are legitimate fans of the Mustang, but I won't be surprised if almost all of these cars end up being sold to people who have never owned a Mustang before. Because let's face it, most car collectors wealthy enough to purchase a car like this probably thought they were way too good to drive a Mustang until they saw the GTD. Now Ford has been very public about their intention to make the GTD faster around the Nürburgring than Porsche's most potent GT cars. And that is a lofty goal. But Ford has packed the GTD with race technology and cutting edge aerodynamics, not to mention an 815 horsepower engine. So it's going to have fantastic handling. Uh, it's, uh, it's a very good goal display. Uh, Personally, I think Ford will be able to beat the GT2 RS, which has a Nürburgring lap time of 6 minutes and 47.25 seconds. Because the GT2 RS is already 6 years old, and it's built on a road chassis that dates back to 2011. But the much newer 992.1 GT3 RS, which has a Nürburgring lap time of 6 minutes and 44.84 seconds, is probably out of reach for the GTD. But it would be exciting as hell to see Ford beat it. Ford has been testing the GTD at the Nürburgring for about four months now, and some manufacturers like to spend a full year testing their car there. So at this point, we're not sure how long Ford will continue testing the GTD before we get some official lap times, but hopefully it will be soon. Thanks for watching, and for more automotive content that you cannot find anywhere else, click here to subscribe. Short tail form. This was a very enterprising... Um